without salt. Pretty bland, right? That's because salt is one of our basic tastes. However, we're told that too much salt can be bad for our health. Table salt, which is also known as sodium chloride, is made up of two elements, sodium and chlorine. Sodium is an essential nutrient used in several of our body's functions. However, consuming too much sodium is unhealthy. Among other things, high sodium intake is known to raise blood pressure. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is a serious problem worldwide. High blood pressure really carries with it a whole host of problems. Think about it this way. If you've got high blood pressure, your organs are experiencing higher trauma, higher level of, uh, of tension, if you will, or pressure uh, transmitted through the blood vessels, and it puts a toll on those organs over time. High blood pressure increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, kidney failure, and even dementia. If left uncontrolled, it could even cause blindness or heart failure. 90% of the adults in, in the United States will develop hypertension and that has been shown not so much due to you know any type of hereditary condition but it's due to a long-term excess salt intake. But there is good news. Hypertension is not only controllable but it's actually preventable. Blood pressure can be lowered naturally without drugs or expensive treatments. When talking about hypertension, it's also important to discuss potassium. In studies, potassium has been shown to decrease blood pressure. We're not consuming enough potassium. And where do you find potassium? In fruits and vegetables. Simple lifestyle changes can have substantial effects. One of the easiest places to start is salt intake. The average American is eating in the range of 3,400 to 3,500 milligrams. Now that's an average. And if you say, what does that look like? It's about a teaspoon and a half of, uh, of salt per day. May not sound like a lot, but it's way more than we need. For example, we could lower our risk of disease. I mean, tens of thousands of lives would be spared. This is very uh, compelling data. It comes out of the New England Journal of Medicine in 2010 by just decreasing by half a teaspoon a day our sodium intake. In general, the U.S. Dietary Guidelines recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day for most individuals. Um, one teaspoon of table salt contains approximately 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So that's about the limit of what we should be consuming in a day. Uh, but those 51 and above, they're now recommending no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day, along with um, African Americans and those people with diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and hypertension. These numbers lead us to the obvious question. Where is all this salt in our diet coming from? You know, a lot of people, when they hear about sodium and how much uh, they should be getting, they say, I'm not you know, eating a teaspoon and a half of sodium. I hardly use a salt shaker. They're missing the point. The main source of sodium in our diet is hidden salt. A study published in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition found that processed foods were responsible for 77% of Americans' daily sodium intake. Food manufacturers in America seem to be cramming their products full of salt. Take these common pantry items as an example. A serving of Campbell's chicken noodle soup only contains 60 calories, but is loaded with 890 milligrams of salt. One small box of Kraft mac and cheese contains a whopping 1,740 milligrams of sodium. A Hungry Man beer battered chicken dinner contains 2,400 milligrams of salt. That amount will put half the country well over their daily intake level. But even these servings may be relatively small compared to what you'll find at a restaurant. For example, a bean burrito at Taco Bell will provide you with 960 milligrams of sodium. Olive Garden's classic lasagna weighs in with 2,830 milligrams of sodium. And the vegetarian version of P.F. Chang's double pan-fried noodles contains a whopping 5,360 milligrams of sodium. If you want to make a big dent in your sodium consumption, spend more of your time in the produce aisle, on the perimeters of the store, and less time in the middle of the store. If you're grocery shopping, try to eat more at home, uh, eat less meals out, because if you're doing that, you're going to dramatically decrease your sodium intake. And usually I recommend um, the one-to-one -one ratio principle in terms of the low sodium 
principle, which means that for every calorie, you should have no more than one milligram of sodium in that product. So as you begin to cut the excess salt from your diet, think of the added benefits you'll experience. Processed foods are not only packed with salt, but they also contain a host of preservatives and chemicals. By eating more fresh, unprocessed foods, you'll also reap the benefits of consuming a healthier, more nutrient-rich diet. At the end of the day, nothing beats a simple home-cooked meal. I'm Grace Jung, and this is your Life in Health. Thank you.